Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're going to talk about ice ban. Is it a boon or is it a bane? So let's dive deep into it. So this is a momentum or movement that is happening and it's happening worldwide. Let that be very clear. It's almost global at this point in time. And many countries uh, aim is to flat out ban ice in jumps. Basically, uh, from a certain point, again, every country has a different deadline. But uh, from that point onwards, thou shall not sell any new combustion systems flat out. Now, whenever you hear ice, maybe you do not know, but it simply means internal combustion engine. That's it. Nothing more than that. And yes, technically, it also includes jet engine. Now, again, depending on the country, depending on the location, some are like uh, very hateful towards diesel, some are very hateful towards everything and then they're like, okay, some are like, okay, let's ban petrol, some are like, let's ban diesel, some are like, let's ban everything, uh, like EU where it's like, yeah, we're gonna ban jet fuel, which again is stupid, but they are doing it. So, uh, internal combustion engines, including jet engines, so some hydrocarbon to all hydrocarbon ban should be there, diesel, petrol, jet fuel, all are included. Now, timeline, uh, what kind of year we are looking at? We are looking from 2025 to 2035 plus. So it's not that far away. And be mindful, different country has different uh, percentage goal. For example, uh, like South Korea, Japan, India, uh, they have a different kind of aim. China has different kind of aim. And EU countries have bit very weird aims. And be mindful, uh, many times it's very easy to confuse people who do not understand the scale of population. They're like, oh, uh, Norway can do this, Netherlands can do this. It's like, dude, I'm not even joking when I'm saying this. Those are what we classify as mohalla in our area. AKA that's how tiny their population is. It's one thing to do something when every Tom, Dick and Harry inherently just speaks one language. It's completely different to do like when you have that many people in just one block. That's it. So fundamentally, do not uh, let that, oh, one EU country did that, okay? Especially if you do not know the population. Please look into the population first and then you're like, okay, it makes sense. So whenever you see something like, oh, this small country, uh, again, people will not say small country, people will say this country, but you have to check into it. Like, is the population small? Because things are getting done in a small country, it should be the, that's the core benefit of having a small country. So uh, timelines are very different. For example, so, uh, like uh, Norway's target is 100% uh, banned, so to say, by 2025. Netherlands, 2030. Uh, UK, 2035. France and Canada, 2040. Germany is a bit later, 2050. Kind of makes sense. They are known for automobile industry. If they poof it, it's like, what the hell is left? So that's there. And again, this uh, map is a bit older. Uh, it only goes to 2020. Although not that much progress has been made worldwide, realistically speaking, where it's like, oh, they have finally made some progress. It's not that huge. Like again, tiny countries will give you that idea, oh, this country is completely EV. It's tiny. It's not having to deal with 1.5 billion people. Be it India, be it China, or heck, even a smaller country like USA, 0.3 to 0.4 billion people. So timeline is there. And be mindful, every country is uh, thinking about it. Some countries are like, okay, 25% of the cars have to be uh, non-combustion vehicle or things of this nature. But again, every country is planning this worldwide, so to say. So this is a movement, this is real, is gonna affect you. So what's the logic behind is this sort of ban? Well, uh, idea is very simple. It's the easiest way to stop CO2 production. Assuming CO2 production is bad, this is one of very good tool. Now, is CO2 production is bad? No. CO2 emission of our past, that's bad. CO2 emission that we are doing, that's not an issue. Why? Well, whenever you emit CO2, it's consumed by the plant. Then you eat the plant, you release it again. So it's just cycling. Basically, we are running on solar energy. So any carbon dioxide that is cycling, that's not an issue. Any carbon dioxide that we are releasing from Earth's past of millions of years, like fossil fuel, that's the problem. That's unbalancing it. The biological sphere, the biosphere of Earth uh, is unable to digest that excess CO2 and it's breaking down. That CO2 is the problem. So stop. Now let's assume you want to stop CO2. Does this work? Well, absolutely. If you stop the consumption of that fossil fuel, fundamentally on a core level, it's like, hey, uh, what if we don't burn fossil fuel? Would it help? Absolutely, without any issue. And uh, the idea is, we're gonna do it softly because your next purchase would be EV. You will not notice it. You're like, hey, I bought this car, I used it for 10 years, 15 years, whatever have you. And then I bought a new car and it was EV and you never noticed it. And that's the whole aim of it. It's gonna be very slow, it's gonna be very smooth. And it's only gonna be a matter of time before everybody is switched to EV and it would be a smooth transition. And uh, complete adoption will be achieved. Not that like 3% or 4%, no. Complete every single four wheelers, not trucks or tractors, every four wheeler would be EV. 
and the aim is it would be slow and painless for all parties because manufacturers will get time to adapt to it uh, market uh, basically companies will get time to uh, clear out inventory develop things and people will be slowly ease into it and models would be available before it becomes mandatory so uh, it will be easy slow phase now has it been done yes technically it has been done with USB C now be mindful USB C is mark 2 of this mark 1 was micro B uh, USB micro B now European Union did notice in the early days that because mobile com mobiles were becoming a big thing early 2000s so they were like okay we have to standardize it otherwise charging brick is becoming a hassle every company had their own charging brick Samsung Nokia um, Panasonic Motorola Sony erection uh, every company has their own blah 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 so you got all of them together including apple and it's like okay we have to standardize and ironically every company agreed to it because again that time it was not a law law it was like a please memorandum for understanding kind of deal everybody agreed including apple but apple was like what if i piss on the people so they're like okay uh, we're giving a raptor that's why like lightning to usb is the default in iphone uh, so they did that so learning from that humiliation in 24 24 they introduced a mandatory law it's like no apple cannot get away with this now everybody has to use USB-C, and they also improved the fact that not only you have to use USB-C, you have to support power delivery so you cannot be like oh if you're not using our charger it will be slow charging no you must support power delivery standard you can have your proprietary bs but it has to be on top of power delivery so if you have a dedicated high quality power delivery adapter it should work with all phones and even laptops will be included in 2026 so aim is by 2025 we'll reach a world where we'll never think about any power adapters because everything would be USB-C. so this is a phase out again it's not done bye-bye it's done slowly and again right now also you can buy a lot of laptops that have USB-C power but again uh, the old power standard is not powerful enough it's only 100 uh, watt to 120 watt not enough some laptops do consume more than that so for that more power 48 volt 5 amps rating uh, the power delivery 3.1 was introduced that should be mandatory by 2026 so this is the logic it has been done it has been a positive thing and again i would agree uh, that this was a good thing and i really like the fact that they directly <laughs> grabbed apple by the balls it's like no no more bs you shall have USB-C. i'm happy with that so that's the idea with this where it's like it's going to be such a slow change that nobody's going to be freaked out it's going to be easy it's going to be gentle and people over time will be like hey, hey awesome so that's the hope of it. Now, are there any problems? Well, yes. Uh, the biggest problem is this is a top-down thinking. For example, uh, top-down thinking is government, uh, we shall use solar, that's top-down. Everybody automatically does solar because again, uh, like in my area, people are doing solar. Why? Uh, generally, they are fed up by poor electricity. You are fed up. So every Tom, Dick and Harry who can afford it, they are putting solar. And again, that's a good way. Government does not have to do much. People are doing it. Other places, people where electricity is good, but it's expensive, people are like, you know what? I'm buying solar because I do not like the idea of paying so much for it. And again, price hike is also uh, incentivizing them. So that's there. So those are market forces acting, not top-down thinking. That's a good way. That's way it's less painful and it's adapted by people who are far more affluent, far more adaptable to things. And it slowly allows to technology to trickle down and it allows have cost reduction because again, now more people will be trained, more people will be available, more competition. It's good. But if you force it, especially top-down thinking, it could uh, create a better scenario, very, very bitter scenario, so to say. And world is not ready for it. That's the most ironic part. The laws have been planned. It's like, oh, we're gonna ban this one. It's like, have you actually done the calculation? What would happen to this goddamn grid if every car was a goddamn electric car? And even if you distribute it, it's like, you know, this is the peak time of charging and all that. Yeah, 100% of grid will collapse. 100% not one not this oh China will not no they will oh Canada will not no they will oh India will not no they will every single day we do not have a protocol or this oomph needed to have that kind of load and be mindful the load itself is not huge it's the surge that they put for example let's say cars instead of having 10 units of tank capacity they have 30 units 30 kilowatt hour so 30 units and again normally if you are charging 30 units let's say over 10 hours right overnight you charged it that's very little power. That's like three units. No problem. Chill. But if you're like, okay, fast charging this puppy and I need to drain like, you know, almost uh, half an hour charging. Yeah, you're looking at 60 units of load. Yeah, that's a brutal. Now imagine doing that on a bus. Bus could have load of megawatt. Not even joking. Uh, that's why Elon truck literally has a plug that is rated for four freaking megawatt. And yes, EU also has a, a bus charger, tra heavy truck charger that are like multi megawatt rated. So yeah, you cannot just have like a thing in the middle of nowhere that can dump 4 megawatt of energy. Yeah, no, no. 
that's like something uh, somebody smoking uh, somebody from top is like oh, i'm going to pass this law it's like do you have you ever tested the goddamn grid it cannot handle it flat out flat out if everybody actually did this yeah everybody is just hoping there is right now is just hopes and dreams it's like world will adapt no it will collapse uh, so and running ev car as a petrol car because again what our current philosophy is because i have been being forced uh, it's almost like okay i'm going to drive this people do not uh, realize that charging at home should be the primary uh, perspective charging when it's not moving that's the aim you should not supposed to like okay i'm driving i'm going to go to this uh, petrol refueling station i'm going to plug it and i'm going to charge it in 20 minutes and then i'm going to come back that psychology that we have forced ourselves into is basically petrol cars is basically petrol car oh, we have petrol pumps so now we have fast charging pumps instead of like in taking 15 minutes it takes a bit more than that but that's the whole point but that should never have been the case we should have always focused on slow charging basically in outdoor places three phase um, like you know level 2 charging in indoor level 1 phase charging and again for few hours that's more than enough slow grid is does not go kaboom everything is nice everything and again battery likes it but no we want ultra fast charger Ooh la 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 charger! I'm not even joking. There are chargers that are rated for 200 kilowatts, and there are cars that are like we can touch just 350 kilowatt. I'm like, do you understand what that amount of energy is? That's a block level energy draw, peak energy draw, and you are gonna draw on one car? Yeah, no. So fundamentally, this whole idea of using just fueling pumps instead of uh, like you know instead of having fuels, we have uh, fast charging. That was the dumbest idea. The whole psychology did not change as should have changed. Meaning, you do not give a damn about fast charging of your mobile phone because your inherent idea is you're gonna go at night and you're gonna plug it. That's why like uh, wireless charging became a thing. It's so low power, but it became a thing because why? You just put it on your nightstand. It slowly charges it overnight. Everything is fine. Everything is dandy. Everything is chill. that's the whole point fast charging is expensive not only in the chemistry in the battery and the all that stuff but these puppies that's fast charging puppies yeah you do not want to google the price of a 200 kilowatt unit chargers you do not trust me it's expensive like in india it's expensive in china it's expensive in usa it's idiotically expensive like in this thing i do have to say that elon musk was smart so he's like hey uh he has to call up the oem original equipment manufacturers like hey we need the on board level 2 chargers so he's like okay we got this we're going to like let's say we're going to make a 1 million vehicle order 1 million it's like no 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 order 50 million it's like why well again mass production reduce cost okay cool but what are you going to do with so much surplus that's what is there like whenever you open a tesla supercharger box so to say it literally has the cars on board level 2 level 2 chargers but all of them are stacked so each unit is let's say maximum rated to 22 kilowatt now they have Ten of it, hundred of it. So that's why it's so expensive. Again, taking AC that much AC and converting into DC high voltage DC, which sometimes could be eight hundred freaking volts at hundreds of amps. Yeah. So you do not want to Google the price. Trust me when I say this. I dare you to Google it. It's expensive, painfully expensive, and flat out. Uh, it's not suitable for 100% of four wheelers if tomorrow you snap your finger no matter how you distribute the charging cycle you will always find the grid will collapse the moment 100% of four wheelers as of now in 2025 or 2024 does this it will collapse the grid everywhere so fundamental 100% scalable is just not doable grid is not ready for it and the battery chemistry is not standardized this is the most dangerous part whenever you think about fuel you have to understand fuel is not just fuel they do not take crude oil and just like refine it and tada they mix a lot of stuff into it be it detergent be it lubrication and yes there's a lot of stuff that goes into it and again car manufacturers also talk with them it's like okay we're going to use this fuel injector this is how we're going to have the cleaning effect this is how how we're going to take care of the fouling all that there is a whole protocol and both of these two make love together and then you get a fuel that's why we have bsi standard in india and again fuel standard are similar in eu and all that so battery chemistry has not gone through that where it's like okay we gonna if you have this battery tag so to say this is the chemistry and again firefighter has to give a damn about it and uh, people who have to recycle it have to give a damn about it people who are recovering this vehicle from accident they need to understand what sort of chemistry it is so they do not make the situation worst so there is no standardization that is very dangerous and battery replacement is not even planned there are so many cars that like you cannot go to the car company is like hey uh, just swap the battery it's like yeah it's going to cost almost half of the car it's like what the hell and so again i'm being generous sometimes it's more than half so it's like it was not properly planned like we made a car that's super awesome it's just that okay how are you going to service it what do you mean service it the battery will run forever it's like no no 
it's going to be degraded. And again, God help you if you live in a planet that is warming like global warming, you will find out the batteries that were rated for five years, it will uh, really, really going to run out, especially in a hot environment like India's temperature, like 55 degrees as years. So, yeah, Replay like again, even two wheelers, the replacement is not even like, okay, this is how you're going to replace it. It's not designed that way. Again, because battery is integrated as a cell structure, like, you know, structural integrity of the vehicle itself is going through battery. Yeah, they did not plan this properly. And... Most cars that are sold, yeah, it, that, that's the issue. Again, government, if they want to mandate it, they have to figure out. Like, dude, you cannot sell a car if the battery replacement is not logical. Like, you have to be reasonable. It's like, hey, if the battery, uh, let's say this much price you are saying, do you expect the future price to come down? If you do not, okay, what is the maximum price? And please, on the sticker price, say that in this much year, in this much inflation, you should have this much payment for battery swapping. And you're like, okay, nobody will buy cars. That's the whole point. It's not ready. Technology is not ready. And EV cars have very poor resale value. For example, uh, BYE has dumped a lot of electric vehicles. Now you're like, why don't Chinese people steal it? Well, there is no value in it. And if these batteries like sit down for too long, the voltage goes below the safe cell level, yeah, it's bricked. And be mindful, God help you if you live in a place where you get flooded. If your electric vehicle floods, yeah, bye-bye. Because of the high voltage, if it was charged when it got flooded, there is a very good chance it creates a very sort of subtle, uh, you know, gradient, voltage gradient, because again, you have 400 volt in one place, uh, that slowly corrodes things. And please Google how many cars have caught on fire after being flooded. Basically, flooding happened, it slowly corroded, flood was cleaned, everything is fine, people are like, cool, and their house, poof, because it burned fire. Yeah, that's why the poor resale value is zero. Like we are going from an industry where it's like car could be resold two times, three times easily to like lol. So that is a very dangerous problem, like very non-thought out kind of process. So is there a solution? I'm telling you the problem is there a solution. Absolutely. EV technology is not ready for prime time. You have to accept it like willingly, knowingly. Yeah, this puppy ain't ready. We do not have the electricity that's just like, oh, everybody's going to have like ultra fast Uber charging when it's going to like, you know, 10 megawatt on a, you know, generator or things of that nature. Yeah, no, no. We're going to have to accept it that it's not ready. It takes time. We spent almost a century on combustion engine. It took time to polish that much. You're not going to get that in EV just like, okay, 20 years. That's not happening. And we have to build what we call bridge technology, meaning technology that gives other technology to be refined. And it's like, I got you fam. Like back in the old days, there were certain planes that were made with they had jet engine and they had propeller plane also. Because they knew jet engine is so new, so unreliable. At this point in time, they're like, okay, we're gonna fly this. We need the real time data. We need the actual advantage. Let's try both of them. If it works, awesome. If it improves the jet engine, cool. Next version will have the jet engine only. So you need what we call handover technology. Basically, you do not just go from, oh, this technology is not production ready. Let's just dump it into people's lap. People will hate you for it. So series hybrid is the perfect technology. What is series hybrid? Series hybrid is you do not connect the combustion engine or ice engine with wheel no matter what. There is no energy pathway. That is series hybrid. It's like a locomotive or a nuclear, uh, basically diesel submarine. So you have a, a generator. It runs an alternator. Alternator creates power. Power goes in diesel locomotive, goes to control electronics. Then it drives the motor. Completely isolated. Super efficient, super reliable. This puppy is literally hauling countries. And then you have diesel generator going into alternator. Alternator creating an optimum power ratio and then it's going into battery banks and battery bank is like I got this and then it drives the motor that is running the propeller. Known technology time tested for one century. What the heck we did in vehicles? Somebody smoked F1 and they're like okay what if we had the F1 technology? Why would anybody want that? It allows your number to be bigger. It's like imagine sir we have 100 horsepower of electric motor that's 100 horsepower that's good but it's like what if the 100 horsepower of combustion engine that can in short duration can work in concert with 100 horsepower of electric motor and you get 200 horsepower of oomph. That's very good for a product marketing point of view. That's like orgasmic selling pitch and all that. But yeah, the moment you look into a teardown of it, many of them have multiple clutch packs. Not even joking, they have more than one clutch packs. They have gearboxes. It is so messy. I'm not shocked that half of the company is like, yeah, this is too expensive. Yeah, we are selling it at a loss. Yeah, we went bankrupt with this model. What the hell they were smoking? Like we have 100 years of real world data. It's like, what the hell were you thinking? It's like, what if we have uh, F1 technology that requires a whole team of R&D and there is no ROI on that. And then we're gonna just like put that technology into normal cut down vehicle. What the hell? So 
सीरीज हाइब्रिड वाई सीरीज हाइब्रिड अगेन इट अलाउज योर कम्बस्टन इंजन टू फ्लेक्स राइट नाउ कम्बस्टन इंजन इज वेरी इनफिशियंट वाई यू आर डायरेक्टली कपलिंग इट इट डज नॉट लाइक टू बी कपल्ड इट लाइक्स टू फ्री फ्लोट वट डज दैट मीन दैट सिंपली मीन्स एवरी इंजन नो मैटर विच मैनुफैक्चर हैज अ सूटेबल आर पी एम सूटेबल टॉर्क लोडिंग इफ यू कैन कीप इट देयर इट विल गिव यू द मोस्ट थर्मो डायनेमिक इफिशियंसी फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू पुट फ्यूल इन इट गिव्स यू थर्टी फाइव परसेंट इफिशियंसी आउट वेन यू आर ड्राइविंग यू विल नेवर गेट बैक वाई नॉट well because your rpm will never be fixed and even if rpm goes into that sweet spot zone the buffer basically the gearbox and the, all the backlash that happens the torque will not be fixed that's why it's very inefficient so label of your car's mileage never matches in real life because again road driving condition is that brutal but when you have a battery it floats it it's like bro i am not going to put a transmission in you i'm not going to put a goddamn clutch on you you just start the engine let the computer control only one thing because again air temperature does change what is the suitable rpm in this scenario what is the perfect requirement for the engine engine goes into there generator is like i got you i convert everything and then it goes to battery battery is like i got this i will buffer out if uh, your motor needs a bit more oomph battery is like i'm going to discharge and uh, car, it starts to coast is like no problem battery will still keep going so that buffer makes it more efficient so edison motors did that uh, this people were actually uh, swept up by Elon Musk with their Elon truck and all that and he actually went there he actually put money down and then he was like okay he's taking too long and he's like okay i'm going to open my company i'm going to build a truck and he built the truck and he got canadian government approval and he's building two more trucks simple logical if you're running as a fuel truck it's more efficient if you're running as a battery truck still a battery truck you can do it and again you do not have to worry was like what if i run out of charge no problem just start the generator it's far more because it allows smaller battery that's the biggest failure point of an electric vehicle the battery tank capacity has gone up too much that's why it's so expensive it's like instead of having 10 units of energy we are like 30 40 some are 100 that is too much battery chemistry again okay? it's not that you cannot have it it's just that it's huge it's heavy it degrades the road it's bad and again it does not get lighter like a fuel tank so it's it's a penalty you do not want big battery and again that's why it's so expensive you want small battery the car is for more nimble and all that and people are like no i want super long range you do not have to worry about it go to your country whatever country you have go to its uh, road ministry department they will give you a data it's like what is the actual driven like if you set it to 80% of people how much they drive it's very less like barely 30 to 40 kilometers and in high city is like high traffic jam area yeah barely 40 kilometers barely so it's like okay we can only give you a range of 60 km but but what if i drive to like you know other city and online long drive no problem if you keep driving the battery goes too low generator kicks on you do not even notice it that's why it bypasses uh, a range anxiety allows people to manufacture small batteries which are easy to replace easy to refurbish and again allows you to chemistry reswap it again this chemistry works mm, this chemistry because again if chemistry did not work as expected the person will not be stranded so is there and you only can easily do night top up charging with ac level 1 maybe ac level 2 and you never have to worry about it that would be far better they did it real world real scenario and again you can even do full fuel mode you will save money and this is the most mathematical part if large trucks can save 10% on their fuel bill that is like few cars off the road they consume that much so this and again i have seen way too many countries like yeah the big trucks we cannot touch it it's like you see the problem what if you start from there what if you directly save so much money if you use series hybrid and there is also battery to grid or vehicle to grid that would be super awesome where cars can dump energy into the grid or household or isolated locations and again it would be super awesome can it be done again technology exists but it's not standardized and especially in this this would be like yeah you have a generator that is more efficient than default generator why default generator is load directly dependent on load so rpm is locked because of a frequency but the load torque goes up and down here torque is fixed so battery goes Uh, energy goes into the battery battery fuels charge the generator cuts off and you run off the battery and when the battery is goes to low point then it starts everything is more efficient so solution is there no new technology no new bs just you give it buffer time where it's like hey let's figure this thing out let's give people car that is far more comfortable to drive far more smooth far more cost effective rather than bankrupting them with a giant battery now why this is happening well the most dangerous part is moral superiority uh basically i have seen way too many people is like you know uh, driving electric cars and they're very shallow in terms of their understanding it's like dude do you know how these minerals are that's why i do not like the idea of have huge battery in the back cars because again i have studied acid mine drainage trust me it's brutal and again if i could reduce the load instead of like let's say 100 unit what if i have like uh what if i just put 10 and put 10 cars the load goes down 
and again that again it's happening out of sight be it congo be it south africa you're not giving a damn about it but again planet is still suffering you are just delaying the death so that is a very critical aspect that out of sight out of mind does not solve the problem again if you have a uh, people who are running everybody is running on electricity but the energy is coming from coal that's not that beneficial but again if people are running on series hybrid and saving 10% of fuel that is direct energy saving direct less pollution and again as technology will get up better then you're like okay now we have new battery stack it's a bit better now we have even better battery stack it's ultra better now we have better motor technology even more better a lot of things can be done so that's why out of sight out of mind is very dangerous a lot of people think about, oh this is just gonna run on solar it's like how the heck do you think that happened and that's why like big battery have very bad footprints and ruling class can easily afford it so right anybody who's passing the law they can easily afford it uh, it's just that right now especially after 2019 the hyperinflation that has happened worldwide yeah normal people can't and again i'm being generous with normal people majority of people are like bro car is a dream that i could no longer see and you are like okay now you have to buy this new technology that is super expensive and we are forcing it so companies are like bro you are forcing it we can charge whatever money we want because again there won't be a competition what the else you going to do so the companies are happy so yeah it's very bad and here's the when these sort of people passing judgment from ivory tower so to say they do that it's very uh, forceful it's like i'm going to pass the law and this is going to be done even i'm not joking kamala harris actually in tv show have said this it's like you know we're going to mandate uh, everybody has to use electric car i'm like no don't mandate it the moment you mandate it people hate it don't do that and if you live in a country that has democracy it can backfire why do you think trump was elected again the more laws you are passing like what if we have this recycling charge what if we have this you're not thinking it through you're not letting market do it you are forcing it from top down people will hate it and again god help you if you have hyperinflation scenario yeah people will elect someone who lets this pain go away for example donald trump so again and many times all these people who are talking like oh, every towers and all that environmentalist especially activist or hipsters uh they do not have a proper action plan for example if i say everybody should do solar i will never say that why not because i understand if actually everybody did that grid will collapse because we will no longer have inertia so i'll say hey let people do solar let indian government build pumped hydro let indian government build uh, you know thermal energy storage on coal power plants again it's inefficient but does give grid inertia so now we can go and trust me even this level of basic bitch thinking is not been done by majority of activists they're just like what if we do this like you did not think it through and if i can outthink you trust me you have not gone through the papers that you should have done and again that will sound very painful for people who are suffering and they will be like okay let me burn the whole goddamn world you never want people to be there so it is usually futile to try to talk to facts and analytics to people who are enjoying the sense of moral superiority in their arrogance and again that's the easiest way to find us like every renewable energy has a penalty how do you mitigate that penalty if they even know that there is a penalty uh, then they are like you know they are on the people who actually do the work if they are like no there is no penalty it's like run away those are dealing with moral superiority and i have seen way too many of these that scares me like there is some moral superiority indian uh, bureaucrat who is like okay what if you do hydrogen train i'm like germany built it they put all the knowledge documentation openly for the public to read it's like if you do this you going to be bankrupt and they are doing it and again they will not suffer the penalty i will so that's the whole thing no proper action plan is like okay we're going to do this this going to have this penalty we're going to solve it this way there is no planning that's why like series hybrid solves it it's like it's just a car it's just more mileage car or it's a electric car that sometimes can act as a in long range drive it can act as a electric car you have bridge technology instead of in that bridge was like what if we had like you know transmission with a freaking giant clutch boxes it's like who came up with that and again this is the joke that is going on california told not to charge evs as grid struggles in heat wave yeah that's what it means when you nobody thought it through it's like you know they should have planned for it that's the whole point of the government that's the whole point of top down government but it did not work that's why be very mindful of moral superiority it's very dangerous so this was my presentation on basically ban on ice the pros and cons of this hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press this like press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you are free and as always thanks for watching